Okay. Hello. Hi, guys. Here we are again for this week's edition of UTV Com News Live. Um, so we've talked a little bit about antennas before. Um, we had a request to discuss uh, antenna mounts and grounding and yeah. grounding. Um, and so we thought, you know, we can uh, just um, do a little bit more about antennas. Antennas is a deep pool. There's yeah. a lot to be said about it. So we're going to um, talk you through some of the things that we have done. Um, some of this is going to be fairly techy. Um, so if you really want to geek out on, on radios, <laughs> but we get these questions a lot. So we're just going to walk you through kind of what it is. So um, one thing that as you are looking at radios that um, is not necessarily well known, there's, there's a way to measure um, how well the radio is interacting with your antenna and your coax. And it's a, called an SWR rating. So Kirk's kind of been uh, heading up that piece. So um, Kirk, why don't you tell us about SWR? It's a standing wave ratio. So when you get your your radio and your antenna and your coax all kind of play in effect and your antenna play into effect of the SWR ratio. And you typically, you know, you can find on the internet people saying, oh, you want less than two and others saying less than three, you know, so it's kind of all over the board. I typically say as long as you're pretty much less than three, you're not going to do any harm to your radio, but you want to try to get below two on that SWR for sure. If you can to get the best rate radio or ratio or rating or ratio on your on your antenna and you can never get below one if you got one, below one you got something wrong with your with your reader okay and so what's the ideal number so anything below two so if anything you're in the below one, two yeah you're great it, even if you start and, if, and, and it depends on which frequency it is too because the different frequencies you can't our radio has got a massive range right it's a, a huge amount of frequencies and so you can only tune a, a an antenna for a certain range. And as soon as you get outside that range, uh, it starts getting worse and worse and worse. So you can kind of tune it to one frequency in a band. And as you get outside that band, it's it's almost like a curve. So it's got a curve to it. You get the best at one frequency. And as you get further to the right or to the left, that frequency, it gets worse and worse. So we have tuned ours to the frequencies we typically use. So the dual band is uh, right around that 151 to 156 area megahertz. And then the um, GMRS frequencies, we tune to those that 462 megahertz uh, frequencies. And we've got a couple of photos of it. Um, I'll, we'll pull it up here. Um, okay, so. Um, oh, it's right there. This one? Yep. Okay. So you can see right here, here's our SWR. And here I had to do some, when I was doing some testing with our manufacturer to make sure it was tuned to our, our, our clamps and our mounting solutions. Um, I had to go back and forth with the, the customer because, or the manufacturer, because what they do is that's, that's, that antenna has got a little uh, capacitor inside of it and they do the tuning based on what I, I'm seeing. And uh, so, we, so they tune it at the factory and that's why it's not like the old antennas where you can kind of cut the antenna up and down. It's tuned from the factory and you can't, you can't cut the whip. But uh, this one right here, we got a really good rating on 101 and I can't remember the frequency it says on there. My eyes are too bad, but it looks like 462. So that was a GMRS uh, frequency right there. So, and then I got another one with the long antenna. And this one was like the best, you know, this is, this is right at the optimum of that antenna. You can see it's at right at the 153.11. So right at the bottom of the curve. So you go right or left to that 153 and it starts getting, uh, you start picking up uh, a higher standing wave ratio, but this is a really good one. And people always ask too, are these non ground plane antennas? And the answer to that is yes, because you could see how we've got them mounted. If you want to pull that picture up one more time, Dustin, uh, the other one where it shows our mount. So you can see that I did it on this mount on the side of the cage when we were tuning these. So we've tuned them to our mounts. Now, a, gr a ground plane is always best, right? But we have tuned our antennas to our mount, the swivel mount, to make it sure that it's hitting the optimum and that's where we're getting. So anyway. Cool. Okay. So you address the cutting. That's, that's <laughs> something people do ask us, do, yeah. do I need to cut this antenna to uh, get the right length? Yeah. Do you, 
do we pull this out and cut this and don't do that? It's it. There's actually it's all, done. it's all done. There's a capacitor inside here. This is not like the old school antennas where you cut the whip to to tune it. You leave it the way it is. If for some reason you're getting a really bad SWR rating, we need to find out what's going on. Maybe we need to move your antenna a little bit, or maybe you've got your coax coiled up somewhere, or you're not, or there's maybe something problem with the transceiver or something like that. But for the most part, everything's good. Um, and uh, we've we've done a lot of the testing and stuff for it. So so the people who are asking that <clears throat> represent, you know, 0.01% of our customers, yeah, like the super right. geeky guys. Yeah. So if you're asking us that, we consider you a super geeky yeah, guy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but um, for the rest of everybody else who is like, hey, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Well, you don't need to know it existed because we took care of it. But um, we did want to show you an example of one. Yeah, let me can show so, you. Go over to our workbench. This is quite the effect here. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, we have one set up. <laughs> Let me see if I can see this. Is it? Uh, can they see it? I think so. Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit. I'm gonna fire the radio up here, and then you're gonna see it go right there. So there we got a 1.01 on this one. So that was a weatherman channel. So. And if I change the frequency, it'll uh, it'll either get better or worse. So as you start getting further away, that one's still good. See how it changed on the Baja pit? See, it went to 1.97. We're still good, but you can see as you change your frequency, you get further away from the optimum. It will change. So, but 1.97 is still a good uh, SWR. It's not as good as the 1.01, but it's still, I would not worry about that one bit. So, anyway. okay. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so that's some of the, the techie, geeky stuff that we do in the background <laughs> that uh, you don't realize is happening and, and that's making kind of the magic work. Um, so part of what you're gaining um, by having us take care of all that stuff for you. Um, all right, so we talked about uh, SWR rating. We talked about, uh, yeah, let's look at the chat, see if we have anything. Oh, nothing yet. Okay. Um, Ground plane, that's a really common one. The answer is you don't have to have it, but it doesn't hurt, right? So like if people will mount, sometimes they will cut a hole in their metal or their aluminum roof and they will mount the antenna directly on there. That creates a big ground plane. So, you know, usually awesome. it's best. But again, like our radio, when we were testing the antenna, before you cut your hole in your roof, kind of mount it there and see if you're getting the popping sound like we've talked about in the past. So before you start cutting holes in your roof, so. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, if you guys have any questions as we're talking about this, feel free to post them in there. Ground, um, ground wires too. When we, so I get the question, do I put my ground wire from the antenna straight to the ground wire of the battery? We typically tell people to go straight to a body ground. So find a bolt on your thing instead of uh, going to uh, the, the battery. Yep. And the ground wire you're talking about. Yes, ground is this wire. guy right here. Yep. So this is we call it the antenna ground wire, but really it's not an antenna ground. Yeah. It's a coax ground. It is a coax ground. Yeah. So um <laughs> it's the coax ground wire. So we anyways. say it's antenna because some people don't know the, what a coax is. So, yeah. yeah. It, and it mounts to the base of the antenna. It, it does mount to the base. But of the it's antenna. actually not touching the antenna. It's touching the coax. Yes. So um Let's see here. Yes. Brian, you were the influencer. I think you on were this. the one. Yeah. I think <laughs> you're the one that suggested on that, Brian. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for, uh, suggesting. for suggesting. We yep. appreciate the, the engagement on that. Yep. Um, okay. One more thing we wanted to go through with you on this is um, how to measure for your coax. So, um, what you're going to need to do that first is some string. Um, doesn't have to be any type. You can use kite string, whatever, right? So, let's go over to the machine. Go on a little tour here of our shop here. So I went riding last weekend, so my machine's a little dirty. Yeah, it looks like you had some fun there, Dustin. What fun? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go very far to, to get your machine looking like that to when it's wet at all. All right. So what I'm doing is, is if I was knew that my I was going to work on a console, I would start up the top here, and I'd take the end and I'd put it basically in the middle where I knew that um, you know the console was going to be mounted basically because it's going to go to the back of the radio. And then I would run my string along the side. And then I go, where am I mounting this one? 
So if I was mounting it on the side, I would mount go to the C pillar with it. If I'm mounting it to the center, which this one is, I would go to there and then give it a little bit of extra to go out there. And I'd hold on to this. And now I throw my tape measure on this to measure this to see how long my coax needs to be. Um, if you are mounting in dash, obviously you're going to start down here with it and you're going to roll it through your, if you're going to go across through your center console or you're going to run it across the back, just run your wire like it's a mini. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, what? A demo coax is yeah. basically what it is. So it's a test coax just to, to try to get the length. Now, um, we can talk about the coaxes for a second. Yeah. Let's go back in the shop. See, this question is a deep question, but let me grab this. Nope. Oh, one of the this one. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at our coaxes, our coax, what we do differently than other people too, is uh, we have all of our coaxes pre-cut and soldered at the factory. So you can um, cut these things and you can get tools of cutting them and shorten them. Um, you know, when we did this before, when we were doing our testing, you see, you see this thing, see how it's got nice and sealed at the bottom. It's got this heat shrink on it. Um, that's all factory done. We don't do that. So they're mass producing these. If you're shortening those, you snip this and now you have a temporary one. It usually has a set screw that grows into that. And that set screw tends to get loose and becomes a fail point. So we chose not to do that with our system. We chose to have them all pre-cut. And so they, we have standard lengths, um, 17, 15, 10, 7, 3, 2, 7 inches, right? Yeah. Two, something like that. So um, you have to pick one that's inside of there. Uh, and obviously, don't coil it, right? So that uh, we ran some tests on there. We could have ran a test on that for this. Yeah, we could have ran a test. Yeah. Put a coil on that thing and probably did a SWR test and see what that would have done. Yeah, we could have probably done that, but we did a we did a long distance test. So I actually live about a mile and a half through many residential houses between Dustin and I's place and the shop, and um, we found very quickly that I couldn't hear him when he was uh, when he coiled it up. So well, and what I done test. is I just pulled the radio out. You know, they, the 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 coax has come packaged like this. So all I did is took this and screwed it onto the back, and then just screwed the antenna on because I didn't want to undo the the um, zip tie zip on it. Tie, yeah. I just like that's easy to do. So I uh, I ran the test and he couldn't hear me. Yep. And so then I uncoiled it and suddenly he could hear me. Yep. It was just, it was crazy. It was nine day. Yeah. Yeah. I went, I went from static to, wow, there you are. <laughs> so we know that that works. We ran that test. Um, anyway, so our coax is all over that length. So you're going to have to, when you do that string measurement thing, you're going to have to find the one that's closest to that length you need. And then, um, you know, go a little bit longer. Just make sure that you burn it up some other way than coiling it like an extension cord. Um, but, you know, if you call us or if you, you know, you don't know for sure, we, we know what most of the lengths are. In fact, that's one of the updates that's going to be on our website at some point is we've got charts that show you, you know, what to get based upon where you're mounting it. But we will, we will send you, you know, the one, the right one that you need based upon the information you give us. Um, if, if you, um, want our help. So, um, so that's coax, ground wire, SWR, ground wire, SWR, the different antennas. So, oh yeah, one one other question we get quite a bit is, which one, which antenna should I pick? The high gain, which is a five point five decibel, or it's a DBI, or which is this one? This is our high gain, which is the five point five decibel, or the shadow, which is a two point five gain decibel, DBI. So. I personally run the shadow all the time. Now, I used to run the high gain, got it caught in my toy hauler spring once, spent a long time trying to get that thing out of there. I threw the shadow on there and I only ride with the shadow. Now, I only ride, I'm never more than a couple miles, you know, a mile or from my from my group. And I've never had a problem talking to my, to my uh, group. So I just run the shadow antenna all the time. 
Now, if you're Mr. I need to get as much range out of this as possible, and I'm trying to speak across the desert, uh, you're going to want our high gain antenna. And maybe you do both because you can quickly just, you know, spin them on and off. They're a tool is to get them on and off. So that's kind of my answer to that. I don't know if you got anything more on that one, Dustin. Yeah, I run the ask. shadow too. I always tell people yeah. to buy the shadow. And I say, look, if the shadow doesn't work, you know what? It's, you know, 40 bucks by the, by the high gain and by you can go gain. both. But yep. I, I don't know that I've had anybody come back and buy the high gain. There's probably is. I don't think I. But I'm we had sure a lot really. of people you know, them breaking them off on trees and buying multiple from us. Yeah, that was when we had the old connection in between. We had a lot of people breaking them off, but uh, I think we've, I don't know if I've ever broke one of these ones. Oh, since okay. We, maybe since we, we've done maybe we don't have that issue as much anymore now. We got a new, we don't have that centerpiece on there anymore, but we still, you can still have a potential of breaking it, but we do have a breakaway spring. I mean, you can see that I'm, I'm pushing pretty hard here on this. So yeah, it is nice. Yeah, but you can break things. If oh, you, yeah, you can you break run them. Into them <laughs> yeah. Still. yeah, you run them over a tree branch. So this is just a lot simpler. A lot, so so yeah. and, and it works great. So yeah. that's that's the default answer is, you know, go with the shadow one. Yeah, I um, like the shadow. So that's just me. Simple. Seems like there was something else that I was going to talk about, the antenna ones. So um, Brian's got... Uh... Uh, Brian, oh, I run both, mostly the shadow. Okay. Yeah. It's good to know, Brian. Um, oh, I know what the other thing was. All right. So here's another thing that we get quite a bit is um, people wanting to do their own mounts on a roll cage with their antenna. Okay. So here's the deal with this. If you look at this right here, you oh. see how this screw screws down. Okay. So um, what you do is you put this up through the hole. We don't happen to have one, do we? I've got a mouth, yeah. All right. So this is a this is a really common thing to. We'll grab a mount here. Okay. So you see how thin this is? How thin that metal is? That's deliberate. Um, if you get like a roll cage thing, sometimes that metal is really thick. And so here's what happens when you go like this. You slide this up through here, and you take this screw and you tighten this down on here, you can see if that metal is not, if it's too thick, this little button that's on top of here, you see that little guy? Let's go this way. Um, that little button needs to stick up above this thing, or at least flush with it. You don't want it to be recessed. And if that metal is too thick, what ends up happening is the screw only goes down you know, that far because the metal is that thick. And when that goes out of there, that button is recessed. And why that matters is, yeah, if you look at the bottom of this, there's a little button right here. See that little plunger? And this thing right there touches that plunger. And that's what really makes your connection for, um, you know, for the antenna to go through. Everything else is grounding. That's really the magic right there. So that all happens inside there. It touches that. And if that thing is not down far enough, what ends up happening is, is when you screw your uh, thing on top of here, you don't even see it. You'll screw that all the way down and it won't be touching the button inside. There'll be this gap because it can't go down far enough. So thickness of what you're using for your antenna mount matters. You want a thin piece of metal. So like somebody's roof, that works great. And if... Um, if you use R mounts, it works great, but don't put like a, you know, eighth inch thick, you know, piece of sheet metal and try to do that because it's just too thick and you won't have your button that touches that. And you won't even know it, right? But you may go, man, my range stinks. Well, yeah, it's because the connection isn't, yeah. it isn't touching there. So that's an important thing to, uh, to know as well. All right. Hello, Chris. Hey, Let's Chris. go read some comments on here. Better price of buying three shadows. Uh, <laughs> I, Do you need three shadows? <laughs> you must be buying a bunch of friends who probably have the high gain. You're like, okay, let's, yeah, let's swap out to the gain. other one. That's right. Uh, when's the next sale? So price questions. Um, so we, uh, so we, we kind of put ourselves, price ourselves where we're trying to give everybody the good old boy deal because um, everybody wants a really good deal. And so if you look at our pricing, we're about a third less to half the price of our competitors. 
so we don't run sales very often um yeah rugged's on sale right now for 20 percent, and we're still i put one of their packages together and i think we still beat them by 250 dollars. i think so yeah and ours is at full price right now so that tells you the difference and theirs is 20 percent off right now so yeah so you know that that's been our approach we took a different approach with with this whether it's right or wrong i don't know yeah um but um so we don't run sales very often um so we uh we should do father's day and black friday father's day and black friday they're about six months apart so that's where we run about two sales mm -hmm. a year six months apart yep yep so that's what uh when the next one is so father's day be looking for a sale if that's what you guys are looking for and we can get you a sale there okay yep i what think else? that's about it yeah we burned 20 minutes we burned talking about antennas <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> but so, those are common things and now yeah. we have a video that will uh we will uh push the people all right you read that i mount my whip antenna low on the cargo rack with a shadow mount up high on my roof perform better uh always the higher the better the matter doesn't matter whether it's the shadow or the high gain always the higher the better but you'd have to balance that, right? I run ex almost exclusively woods. I've got mine mounted down below my roof. So my roof's here, my antenna's like down a little bit. That way my roof is taking the abuse and my antenna's not taking the abuse of the woods. So I don't see a problem with mine. I run in the woods almost exclusively. I never have a problem talking to my family unless I peek out, right? If I get to the top of a summit, I usually radio back, say, is everybody okay? They say yes. So I'll drop down off the summit. I lose radio contact until they summit. And then once we get there, we're back in contact. But I guess, uh, Scott, for do you, do you think that we're going to gain more range by going with the shadow and lifting it up versus a high gain that's, you know, 18 inches lower? No, I don't think so. No. I think the high gain is going to outperform that even though it's lower. The, the only way that the height matters is if you're getting above obstacles, right? Obviously, the higher you go, the more obstacles you're clearing. So... Are, are you really clearing a ton more obstacles by raising it 18 inches on your side by side? Uh, maybe maybe there's a rock that's lower. I mean, they're, they're, you're to clear some more, but probably not a dramatic amount, I would imagine. Um, so, you know, that, you know, comparing it to like the top of a mountain versus the bottom, you know, yeah. of a valley, that's what matters. But it, really what matters on that is the high gains just is designed to yeah. transmit more it's got a higher gain it's got a higher gain like i said it's a 5.5 dbi versus a 2.5 dbi so yep yep okay any other questions that's about it all right well all right. um that's our show for today yeah. so uh if you uh you know thanks brian for uh suggesting something um so if you have any questions Farm away to us. Yep. And we will uh, be happy to uh, do a little video on it. All right. Okay. Take Thanks a lot.